Soil is vital to our growing world. It is responsible for feeding our population, producing fiber for clothing, feed for livestock, and fuel for transportation. You know, I grew up in Missouri. Um, as I learned about soil health, I learned about its relationship to clean water, clean air, nutritious food, food security, and uh, climate change. You know, building resilience to climate change where we're seeing longer droughts, where we're seeing heavier rainfall, and mitigation of climate change. And these things are really important to the generation that I come from. We care a lot about clean water, clean air, and we're concerned for the future. And, uh, and I think that soil health touches on all of those and improves our water quality, uh, improves clean water, improves air quality, and gives us more tools in the toolbox to be resilient to a changing climate by putting carbon in the soil. Today, legitimate fears about soil erosion, nutrient runoff, and more concern farmers, municipalities, and environmental groups. Yeah, I believe food production and environmental goals do not have to be incompatible at all. It really depends on um, the practices and the systems that you follow in order to grow your food. And if you are in food production systems where you're looking at focusing on soil health, um, it's my belief and understanding, and it's backed up by reams and reams of scientific peer-reviewed literature that these are not incompatible goals. For example, one of the things that we do to improve soil health is use cover crops. There was one particular study of which I'm aware where they did what's called a meta-analysis, kind of a fancy word for looking at a lot of different studies at one time, just like it's one study. They did a meta-analysis on 69 different studies and they determined on average the use of cover crops reduced nitrate leaching into groundwater by over 70%. So that's just one good example there where these soil health promoting practices are actually not in opposition to environmental goals, but they can actually help you achieve your environmental goals. Definitely, cover crops do help with moisture management. Uh, what we've seen on our farm is the soil temperatures have been reduced in the summertime, so we're keeping the ground cooler, which is conserving water. But we're also seeing water infiltration rates increase. Uh, when we first started this, our, our infiltration rates were maybe a half inch to an inch per hour. We're starting to see two, three inches an hour. And we don't get those soaking rains anymore like my grandpa talked about. You know, we get 10 inches in an hour and we may not get rain for another month. And if we don't absorb that water into the soil profile, it's not gonna be there for our plants to use. So I think soil health and sustainability are tied together hand in hand. Really, it's, it's about regenerative agriculture. We're trying to rejuvenate the ground that we've you know, tilled over the last hundred years and, and it's starting to go downhill. Um, what I like to see farmers doing is uh, it's really a systems approach. It's not just one tool or another. It's really looking at, you know, reducing the tillage, reducing uh, some of their chemical inputs, also increasing their organic carbon going in the ground through cover crop residue or leaving residue on the ground. And by taking that systems approach, I think that sustainability is, is where we're going to get to. We're going to rejuvenate the ground to where it is sustainable for agriculture to continue. The Soil Health Institute promotes practices that are good for productivity, improve water quality, increase resilience to drought and floods, and provide pollinator and wildlife habitat. We have come a really long way with focusing on the chemicals that soils need, the amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium they need for growing high yields. But one of the things that we have really not paid as good of attention to, quite frankly, in the process is looking at the soil biology. The soil is a living, breathing entity. Just in a tablespoon full of soil, there can be as many of, of microorganisms as there are people on the earth. So you can imagine how many billions and billions and trillions there are just right under my feet where I'm standing. Now, it also takes a lot of food for those microorganisms to grow. And so they primarily feed on carbon. And so one of the things that we are doing in soil health is we are focusing in on those microbial communities. and We're paying attention to what they need in terms of their shelter, in terms of their food supply. And so it's critically important that we provide that so that they don't go dormant, uh, so that they are continually active, because there's so many benefits that we accrue by keeping them active. For example, when those microorganisms grow and die, they release nutrients, they release exudates that can also build what we call soil aggregates. That's when the individual sand, silt, and clay particles bind together. When those aggregates are formed, then you get 
more water infiltration, so you build resilience. Your roots can penetrate the soil more easily. And so there's so many benefits like that that we get from really kind of feeding those microorganisms and feeding that biology that's in the soil. As an independent nonprofit organization charged with coordinating and supporting soil stewardship and advancing soil health, SHI is focused on fundamental and applied research and on ensuring its adoption. The Soil Health Institute is a 501c3, which means it's a nonprofit organization. And it was set up by the Samuel Roberts Noble Foundation back in the end of 2015. And the mission of the Institute is to safeguard and enhance the vitality and productivity of soils through scientific research and advancement. When we talk about safeguarding soils, it's largely about reducing erosion, uh, but we also recognize that we have really lost a lot of our soil, particularly our precious organic matter. And so that's why we also focus on enhancing that soil, enhancing that vitality. SHI is committed to working with all partners to enhance and disseminate knowledge and technologies directed at key soil processes to increase productivity, resilience, and environmental quality. The pillars of the foundation of the Institute includes research, measurement standards and assessment, economics, policy, and communications and education. And so we have partners in the government, in academia, in the industry, and in social conservation groups that help us. Um, the Institute backstops the research, uh, given our, the nature of our business and what our mandate is, and we have a huge vested interest in the measurement standards and assessment to establish a national baseline and understanding of what soil health is. And partners in that would include, you know, the federal government and NRCS, their great outreach efforts, their communication efforts on the communication end, and with ARS, the Ag Research Service has in the history of soil health to help augment, pull all that together, create opportunities for collaboration, uh, minimize redundancy, um, and, and maximize the return on resources. And so we have organized a coordinating coalition. Well, I think one of the cool things for my generation in farming is that the science is catching up with the technology. It used to be that a, a person who uh, wanted to sell your product was your agronomist. And you know now farmers are having to think more for themselves as, as inputs have went up and commodity prices have came down. Um, it really does help to have the science to prove that what we're doing is the right way to do it. And, uh, you know, a lot of people out there um, have, a, have a reason that they, they don't want to do these practices because of the money. There is an upfront cost in the seed cost, but if you look at chemical savings, fertilizer savings, um, all the things that we're reducing on our farm, uh, we're, we're really low input farming and, and it doesn't take 200 bushel corn for us to, to make a profit and that really helps. There's a lot of interest in soil health and that's very, very exciting. But I think that what we also need to keep focused on is the untapped potential that's there. And particularly our knowledge with how we can really focus on building more nutrition into our food supply. And I think a lot of that starts with enhancing soil health and enhancing the nutrient availability in soil so that when those crops that we grow in those soils are more nutrient dense, I think that there's a number of environmental goals we can really address, particularly if we start looking at the biology more in more depth with soils. And I think that to the extent that we can understand those microbiological communities in soil, understand what roles they play with providing nutrients, with building disease suppression, then we can really reach a whole nother level with our food production systems to where uh, we can also simultaneously meet a number of environmental goals. For more information, visit www.soilhealthinstitute.org.